gentlemen, can I say what a pleasure it is to be here tonight and also to be standing shoulder to shoulder with so many people from so many different political backgrounds, Labour, UKIP, oh, I don't know, there may even be a few Lib Dems in here, who knows, there must be a few Dems What's Lib Dem? What a pleasure it is to put aside those political differences and unite behind something that is even more important than any general election we're going to fight for many years, yeah. which is to throw yeah. off the yeah. shackles yeah. of the European Union yeah. and create a better yeah. and independent Britain for all yeah. of us. I do want to say a few words, but first of all to Steve Musto, who's given us the use of this room absolutely for nothing. I mean, I rang him up, he said he couldn't have been more welcoming, so thank you very much yeah. indeed for that. Just yeah. 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 anyone it's Callum because he's not just talking the talk he's walking the walk I mean this is a young man he's doing his A-levels he's working in debt part-time he's a serving TA soldier he's out every single Saturday and every other day as well that he can putting out leaflets I think I saw banners being hung from the uh, from the dual casual I don't want to know too much about it <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it wasn't me I'm honest you know this, this guy's been absolutely superb and all of these these young people as well I mean what it, does it say about the British people that after 45 years of brainwashing and propaganda in the schools and in the universities and the BBC and everywhere else, and all those little signs up saying paid for by the European Union, even though we know they haven't been, they've been paid for. But these people aren't convinced, and neither are the rest of us. No. And well done as well, if I may say, I know there are people from older generations here. My parents actually voted into the European Union. I asked them why. And they said because they thought they were going into a trading arrangement. Yeah. 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 Tom at the time, nobody yeah. said anything. A common market, nobody said anything about a European court well, or a European, European bank or a currency yeah. or a federal state. And I will say one thing in favour of the EU, uh, one little word, if you like, of compliment for the European Union. It's sometimes said that, you know, there's a conspiracy to build a federal state of Europe. There is no conspiracy about it. A conspiracy implies yeah. something secret. I've been over to the EU on many occasions. I was over there on Monday, and I always ask about this. And people look at me a bit surprised, and they say, but there is no secret about it, Mr Davis. That's what we're trying to do. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> they're perfectly open that this is what they're trying to do. That's what ever closer union means. And the only yeah. people who are unaware of it are the British public, because we haven't been told this yeah. by our political masters. And one of our jobs is to, be, to get out there and tell people about this. And, you know, this meeting is going to be short because we're not going to win this by talking to each other in a pub. Nice pub, though it is. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be winning yeah. it by being out there, as we have been this Saturday and the last Saturday. And so I beg you, please, if you have any time at all to give, don't spend it in the time. That's time in meetings. The meetings are no good to us. We need to be out there, and this is what it's about tonight, to encourage everyone to be out there on the Saturdays and any other time that you have to deliver leaflets, even if you can only do a few streets, to come out on Saturdays and talk to people, and you'll be amazed at the great response that we get over the next couple of weeks. Because as Nathan said, this is the only chance that we're going to have to take back control of our money, to take back control of our borders, and to take control of our laws. And all these things are important. The money, it's, uh, as you said, it's £350 million a week, a net amount of £12.5 billion. And my word, you know, let's be honest about it, one of the reasons they're so keen to keep us in is because they're going to lose a lot of cash yeah, yeah, if we yeah, go yeah, out yeah, again. Yeah. And what is particularly insulting about the money side of it is that for the last 20 years or so, the European Court of Auditors have been unable to, to sign off their own books and say what they've actually been doing with that money. If these people were running a private limited company, they would be prosecuted. The directors would be prosecuted and they'd be struck off. And I don't know how any elected politician responsible for taking taxpayers' money, can seriously recommend to taxpayers that they give their money over to an institution that is unable to control. account for that money. Yeah. Taking it's control of our money is the first thing. Taking control of our borders. Can I just say, you know, I, I, I shouldn't have to say this because it should be obvious, and I think I'll speak for everyone here. I'm not some sort of racist. I'm not some kind of xenophobe who's against uh, people immigrating to this country. My wife is actually an immigrant to this country. <laughs> You know, when people say, you know, we have to embrace our European partners, and I say, well, I've got three kids, I'm doing something. There's no, no problems there, guys. But the reality is that we should have a right to say who is able to come into our country. We should also be saying, I think, and I, I don't think it's a, in the least bit xenophobic to say, that anyone who comes into our country should learn our language yeah, and respect yeah. our culture. Yeah. I'm on a, a body called the Council of Europe. 
I won't explain it now. It's costing a lot of money, but there we are. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I've been out, out to uh, to see refugee camps across Europe. I've been to Greece. I've been to uh, Hungary. To, sit to I've walked around the the camp in Cali, the illegal one in Cali, and I went last week to Link's house in Cardiff. And I've noticed a few things which you won't read in the papers. The first is that the vast majority of people who are coming into this country, into Europe illegally, are young men. Yeah. And if they really are genuine refugees, I have to ask, where are the wives and the mothers yeah. and the sisters? Yeah. Yeah. Because they've all been left behind somewhere. Yeah. Another issue is that the majority of them, and this actually has been confirmed reluctantly by the EC, are not coming from Syria at all, but are coming from an arc of countries stretching from Pakistan right the way through to the west coast of Africa. The third problem that we have to face, and it's one that the EU have been asked to look at and have refused on several occasions and tried to brush under the carpet, but it needs saying, the vast majority of these young men are coming from countries which have very different cultural attitudes towards women and in fact hold them as second class citizens. is meant to stand up for human rights, and is the Council of Europe. And I have raised at the last Council of Europe meeting, speeches online for anyone who wants it, why is it that we are not talking about the human rights of women who are in Europe at the moment? Women in cities in Germany and Sweden have been told they can no longer walk the streets at night alone because it's too dangerous for them to do so. Women in towns in Bavaria have told that they must cover up. They must cover up, because otherwise it could lead to cultural misunderstandings with the young men that have arrived. Yes, it's true. And women in, in, uh, are unable to go swimming in swimming pools in Belgium and Germany and elsewhere because, once again, we have had issues with what are called cultural misunderstandings. Perhaps I'll go no further than that. Yeah. With young men who have arrived from countries who think that women who show any kind of flesh are in some ways uh, that they're entitled to carry out assaults on them. Mm. Yes, this isn't a nice thing to have to say, but this is what is happening at the moment. And any organisation that claims to be standing up for human rights needs to start thinking about it and doing something about it. And the European yeah. Union are not. And all I can say is, is this. I've actually heard it suggested that one of the reasons we should stay in the EU is because they'll be able to tackle the migration <laughs> crisis. Now, are they serious? <laughs> well, I mean, have they not noticed that from the shores of the Adriatic to the north coast of France, there are third world style shanty towns springing up all over the place, that 1.2 million people have arrived illegally, and it's expected that many times more will come this year, and of course they will, because the European Union have not only failed to do anything about it, but through leaders like Angela Merkel have been actively egging them on and are now determined to parcel out migrants left, right and centre to people whether they want them or not. We have the right as a British people to say no to this. And we should do. And the, I think the, the final and most, perhaps the most important point of all is that we need to have control over our laws and our politicians. That means people like me and Nathan. You know who we are. And if we do a bad job, you know, you can chuck us out. That's democracy. We know who runs the country at the moment. It's a Conservative government. Before that, it was a coalition. Before that, it was a Labour. If, if you don't like what we do, you throw us out. And quite right, too. Actually, we're all quite politically attuned. Does anyone know which party is in charge at the moment in the European Union, in the European Parliament? Does any, could anyone name any of the commissioners who are making those laws and driving? No, we can't. Nobody can. Nobody knows who these people are. The laws are largely being made by the commissioners, the council of ministers, who, and nobody knows who they are, and the, uh, the, the members of the European Parliament, or some of them will get a look in, but the reality is Nathan can explain better than, 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 than I do. Even when you vote for a political party for a European election, you're only voting for that party in this country. They're going into coalition with all sorts of other parties who may have completely different views. The reality is we simply don't know who these people are. We have no way of getting rid of them, no way of holding them to account, and yet the British government themselves will say they're making up to 50% of our laws. Now, I think it's time to reassert a little bit of democracy. Yeah, yeah. The Remainers are, are, are running a campaign of fear. They're trying to make people scared that we won't be able to trade with Europe if we pull out. Well, do you know what? Trading started in this country a long time before yeah. 1975. Yes. As, uh, you know, yeah. going back to the time of the Danes and the we Wessex and all of uh, the Saxons, the Angles and the Jews, we were still trading then, 1,500 years ago, and we'll be trading again on, set on June the 24th if we pull out. And in fact, it's in their own interest to do that because we are buying a lot more of their goods 
Yeah, and they're buying a Mars. And our biggest trading partner is America, <laughs> yeah. which wasn't in the European Union when I last looked. So we have nothing to fear from that. They're trying to make us scared that law-abiding people uh, from Portugal or France or Hungary, like my wife, are going to get thrown out. No, my wife isn't going to get thrown out of this country if we vote to leave. We can't even throw out, uh, you know, mad Islamic jihadis with hooks on their hands. No, <laughs> <laughs> Although that would be a good start, and I hope we get around to doing that very quickly if we pull out. We're not going to be out there to throw out law-abiding people to stop people from moving around the country any more than you face restrictions going to Switzerland at the moment or that Swiss people face restrictions if they come over here. And nor would we want to because we are an outward-looking people, not an inward-looking bunch of xenophobes. They're trying to make us scared on all counts. But I have a great deal of hope because of what we've been doing over the last few weeks. I think the British people are better than that. I think British people know instinctively when they're being had, and they're being had at the moment, and they know it. And that's why I think that our cause is going to win on June, the 20, on June the 23rd. But I really want to say again that it's absolutely vital that between now and then all of us who are active are just able to go out on Saturdays, give out a few leaflets, talk to people, reassure them that we are not mad xenophobic little Englanders or little Welsh people. We actually have a vision for the future, which is an outward-looking Britain trading freely with the rest of the world, yeah. with people free to move and travel to all parts of the world, free for us to negotiate our own trade agreements with the rest of the world, and free to chuck out our politicians and get rid of them when they fail us. Yeah. That is the kind of Britain that I think all of us want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And on June the 23rd, we have the opportunity <laughs> to open up a new page in British history, and it really will be like that, because I think in 20, 30, 50 years' time, when my children are grown up, and even Callum's children are grown up, they're going to be reading history books that's, that sort of have a syllabus that goes from 1975 to 2016, and then a new chapter starts. Yeah. Britain leaves the European Union, exerts its right to freedom, 2016 onwards. That's what I want to wake up to on June the 24th, and I look forward to working with all of you to make that happen. Thank you very much.